the other sibling has to take care of everything. And sometimes there is resentment. Now imagine this guy. You're the older son. And you watch your younger son go into town. Your younger son is supposed to return with a good investment. He's supposed to come back in a Mercedes, wearing my money suits, saying, I doubled my inheritance. I tripled it. I made a good investment as the housing market was turning upward, and I jumped on that. I bought good stocks. Man, I, we are going to be set from now on. You don't even have to worry about taking, mom and, taking care of mom and dad. I got it. We're good. He didn't return home with that. Did he return home with a good degree? Did he return home with a, a law degree and he's a lawyer now? Successful? No. Did he return home with a, going to business school and becoming a good person in Wall Street? No. Did he, go to, did he go leave house with an inheritance to go to medical school and become a successful surgeon? No. He went to the Bellagio. <laughs> Oh, y'all know about the Bellagio. <laughs> I might not have many older sons in this room. He went to the Bellagio. Spent all his money on the Bellagio. Then he went to the Strip and spent more money in other ways. He lost his money in the Bellagio and had some fun at the other parts of Las Vegas Strip. Spent money, lost money. Now he has less money, so he downgrades to the Luxor. Now he's at the Luxor. The Luxor, for those of y'all who stayed at home and slaved away with your dad, you know, in the parable, the Luxor, I'm assuming, is a cheaper hotel in Vegas. So now he's at the Luxor, wasting his money at the Luxor, and again, still going to the strip. It happens that the youngest son uses all his money on wild living. The King James Version, which uh, Sister Marjorie usually comes to a Bible study, she always reads the King James, and she has the accent for it, so it's beautiful, right? Now, the King James Version, to go something like this. He wasted his substance in riotous living. <laughs> mm. He wasted his substance in riotous living. If, I, if, if you want to tell someone what you're doing for the weekend, go tell them that. I'm going to waste my substance in riotous living this weekend. Right? But, 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 you know, for, for those of y'all who really don't appreciate Shakespearean type of English, he, he spent all his money on, on partying. Damn the party and drinking. And now he's at the alleyway of some McDonald's, breaking the garbage bags, looking for food. Eating. Old French fries. Old quarter pound of McNugget with some barbecue sauce on it. He's eating. This is, this is the descent. When he returns home, he's not going to return home with a law degree. He's not going to return home with an investment. He's not going to return home being a doctor. He's not going to return home with clean clothes. He's going to return home shabby. He's going to return home broke. He's going to return home stinky. He's going to return home ugly. He's going to return home a mess. And he says to himself, as he returns to his senses, my father's servants eat well. I need to just go home and say, Father, I've sinned against you, I've sinned against heaven, make me one of your servants. And then he goes, and he faces home, and he walks home. Now, what y'all don't know, and I don't know, we got happened in your study to find out. The Talmud is an interpretation of Scripture. Jewish interpretation of scripture. And at the time of Jesus, everyone knows this. But there's a rule that says if you're a young Jewish boy and you waste and lose all your money to Gentiles, the family has a procedure. I have write it down and I will mispronounce it. It's called a kitsitsa. Nice. Kitsitsa. The procedure is this that the family of the boy who lost all that Jewish money will take a jar and will put corn and burn nuts in the jar. And when that boy returns home, they will smash the jar in front of that boy, scream his name out loud, and essentially say, you are cut off from our people. Wow. He knows this. All shabby dress. So he says, I'm just going to jump the gun, apologize, and say,
say, make me a servant, because I know I'm not going to be your son. He returns, and he faces home. And the father sees him. And the moment the father sees him facing home, not close to home, just facing home, the father runs. Now this is a big deal for this society as well. Men in this society don't run. <laughs> now, I don't mean that they can't run. I don't mean that they don't race. They don't, they don't, they don't show emotion like that. Not for some bad side. That's vulnerable. That's weak. That's what women do, that's what girls do. This is this society, not America. That's how you put Fathers don't run home. You're a bad son and you made a terrible decision. You, you come to me where I stand. My honor depends on me not running to you. My honor depends on you coming to me. He doesn't care about his honor. That's big. He runs. He grabs his son, hugs him, smells like him, Ugh. hugs him. And his son says, that, look, I've sinned against you and I've sinned against heaven. Just, just, I'm not, no longer worthy to become, become your son. He doesn't even get to finish the sentence the father says to his servants. Bring the best robe, which means bring my robe. Because the best robe is the father's robe. Bring my robe. Get the best ring. That means one of my rings. Put it on his hand. Before anybody could put that kept sit sap thing on this son, before anybody could put the nuts in the jar and go run in front of the son, before anybody could do the ritual where they say to this son, you're done from us, the father wraps his arms around him and has a part for him. Father's love was quicker than any opportunity to break the son out of him. Brings him in. No degree, no housing market boom, no clean clothes, just hungry, ugly, smelly, sorry, son. And the father loves him so much, he ran to him, throws his best stuff on him, has a party for him. That's that. The oldest son sees this. Imagine you being the oldest son. The oldest son's perception of his life with his father. Now, the father's perception of his life with his son might have been different. Actually, it was very different than the oldest son. This is what happens. People have different perceptions of the same reality. Very different perception of the same reality. The father's perception of his son is probably like, my love for my son is continual and strong. The father probably kissed his son's forehead when the son was asleep at night. The father probably <coughs> prayed for his son every night and the older son had no clue about it. The father probably did all these things for love out of his older son. The older son's perception of life with his father was that he was slaving with him. That even though the father loved him and all that, he didn't perceive it as father's love. He perceived it as I'm slaving for you. And you get, you, 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 you let this ridiculous son of yours 